I'm Judith Garman and I'm a freelance user experience consultant and I'm currently working with Richard and Kath at Vodafone and I'm hoping to give you a nice easy takeaway today um, to get you started in accessibility if you're not already started on that route. So first of all I wanted to define what I mean by being inclusive. So it's just treating everybody the same and not making a distinction between people who have an access need and people who don't. And I think we've, we've been banding these words around, but I want to define what I mean by access need. Now, people talk a lot about politically correct language and you're probably wondering, can I use the word disabled and non-disabled and impairment? But by focusing on access, what we do is we move past all that because what we're really interested in is can a person use this? So if you talk about access need, then it can apply to lots of people. It's not just, um, as, as Kath was saying, about you know using your mobile phone on the beach in the sunlight. So it's not restricting it to any particular group. So it's just looking purely on a needs base and not defining people by saying, you know, you have to identify as having a disability because a lot of people either don't want to or they don't know that they have a condition. There's a lot of conditions that go undiagnosed. Um, and, um, yes, yeah, so also being inclusive is including participants very early on in your, in your research, for example, personas, but not necessarily saying, oh, let's have a dyslexic or a motor disability persona, because then you're putting them to one side. So you want everybody to be together. So whoever your persona is, your young social networker, and they happen to have an access need. Now, Everybody's going to have slightly different approaches to creating personas, but I hope everybody at some stage does interviews with representative users. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about, how you can change your approach a little bit to be inclusive. So um, I think the thing about starting to do interviewing and research with people with access needs is you've probably all already done it. So you will have interviewed people who've got dyslexia, people who are on the autistic spectrum, people who've had, um, say, mild motor disabilities or something like that. You may not have even been aware of it. You, you sometimes might have been aware that some conversations were a little bit more difficult. Perhaps you had to keep on drawing people back in. They got distracted and it was a little bit more hard work than normal. But, you know, if you're a regular interviewer, you will have interviewed people with... Um, with access needs. So just, it's next time, just make it part of the process. So, you know, everybody's you're going to be putting together a screener for whatever your um, target persona is. So this example, I've got an aspiring artist, age 18 to 24, using social networks and active in real life and virtual art groups. And then you just add in one line, has a particular kind of dyslexia. Now I've added in visual or double deficit dyslexia because that's the kind of dyslexia that normally impacts more on use of the web and reading and writing. But just bear in mind that not everybody knows what, what kind of dyslexia they have. And so you've made the decision, you're gonna um, involve people who've got dyslexia in your recruitment, but now you actually have to go out there and find them, which I think is, is always the, the challenge when people are doing research. So I'd say generally most people are using recruitment agencies, so work with them, give them as much information as you can, and um, me and Kath have prepared a screener that you can all take away with you at the end of the day, so you can give that to your <laughs> agencies and say, this is what we're looking for, these are the aspects that we're looking for. Um, and the key thing to point out is whenever you're recruiting people with access needs, always ask how the condition impacts on their use of technology because for some people it won't be that strong and then you just need to engage in that process, read the feedback and make a decision whether you know, person A is suitable and person B isn't. Um, and as a starting point, if, if you're new to accessibility and perhaps you've, you know, you, you're not quite sure how to in engage with um, people with different access needs. If you start with these groups like dyslexia, mild vision impairment, mild motor disability, you can just have a conversation. You know, for a stakeholder interview for personas, you don't need to know anything about the technology. You don't need to know anything about any 
particular setup you need to do on a computer. You're just having a conversation with somebody. And um, if you want to look at particular agencies, if you go on the market research website, they've got a list of all the agencies that do specialised recruitment. You're probably looking in the category of um, medical. Okay, and a few more recruitment tips for you. So, you want to recruit from a broad arena. One of the problems we get when we're recruiting people with access needs is people have panels and they set people or the same people turn up over and over again. So you want to try and broaden that. Now, one of the challenges that you can get is people automatically think, oh, right, I'm going to go to one of these charities, I'm going to go to the Autistic Society, I'm going to go to the RNIB. And, you know, they're very good and they'll be very helpful and they will get you people. But it's one exclusive group. And a lot of people who have a disability, they may not necessarily associate themselves with any of those particular groups. So you want to be looking at self-formed groups as well. There's this distinction between organisations of and organisations for. So not everybody wants to be looked after and not everybody wants um, you know, to be told what's best for them. So you do get self-formed groups. And if you go on the web, you know, there's, there's loads of different groups that you can find where you know, people um, are working things out for themselves. In Manchester, we have got the Manchester Coalition of Disabled People, um, and that's typically, that's, they made an active decision when they set that up that that wasn't going to be a charity. Um, so just look to try and get those, those different groups. And... Yeah, probably everybody's going to have a hard time trying to persuade your stakeholders why to do this. You've, you've got some um, good arguments from the, the previous speakers. Um, so just a few things here. Um, we've already had some stats. Um, I think um, Leonie was talking about making your product more um, accessible, making it more usable. But... Everybody at some point does have an access need. So if we're looking at cognitive disabilities, then there's things that will help everybody. Is there anybody in this room who's never used the internet when they're overtired? I'm thinking of parents or in a rush perhaps or ill. Can you, can you raise your hand if you've never ever used the internet in, in those situations? Okay, so you've all simulated having a cognitive disability. So, you know, if next time you're struggling to, you know, um, get funding, you can talk about that. I also want to talk about the fact that, you know, a lot of people with access needs have um, control a large amount of disposable income. Stephen Fry, Terry Pratchett, and um, on the news this morning, I um, was hearing that Henry Winkler is, is the only non-British person in there actually but uh, we can give him honorary British status because he got an um, OBE for all the work he's done with uh, dyslexic children in the UK so all those people there are controlling an awful lot of money so you don't want them to be boycotting your website because you're not accessible because um, they will go and tell their friends and family because that's what happens um, but we also need to bear in mind that there's a lot of people with access needs who don't control large amounts of disposable income because there are strong links to disability and poverty. And when you do your persona interview, hopefully this is going to help you start out on the path that will lead you to do more and more work um, with people with access needs. Because you'll find out that... that the issues that you come across, they're across the whole usability spectrum, they're not defined, and you'll build your confidence, and then you'll say, well, actually, next time I'm going to do user testing, and then you'll go and do a bit more work or go on a course, and you'll find that, you know, that's an easy step. And a couple of tips for your interview, everything in nice, simple, plain English, and get some of those lovely coloured gels, because some people with dyslexia can't read on plain white, so, you know, just couple of quick things to do and um, I'm not going to go through this but um, we've got some screening information on the side um, so just say find out what really impacts on the technology you're testing and finally um, I just wanted to be a little bit contentious why should we be inclusive well as, as far as I'm concerned there is no mainstream 
Thank you very much.